Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head up to Dundee and we're going to have a look at a brewery who are doing some very, very good stuff these days. They seem to be building themselves a very, very good reputation. So this is going to be my second review from 71 Brewing and this is their Left Coast IPA which they're describing as a West Coast IPA coming in at 5.4%. So it's a little bit lower in alcohol than you can sometimes get from this sub style and usually these guys are up in the high sort of sixes, sometimes low seven percents. Um, but we'll be. I'm just. I'm curious to see how it turns out because, like I say, this brewery's been building itself a good reputation. The last beer I had from these guys was the Ferris Red, which was a Munich style Dunkel, and I was very impressed with the authenticity of that. So I'm really curious to see how they do with this one. At some point, either just a little bit before this or a little bit after, you will see a brewery visit video published for this brewery. I stopped off in there uh, on the way up to our broth for the football one time, and they've got a nice little bar set up there so do make sure you check out that video as well and I did a couple of tastings when I was there also but really looking forward to trying this particular beer and as always I hope you guys enjoy my take on this one I've been missing my west coast IPAs and I've been trying to incorporate them a little bit more into the channel but anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that I've done from 71 brewing before no I will add some more in the fairly near future. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography based tagging system, so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Scottish beers that I've reviewed for you, and that's being added to whenever I get the opportunity. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, on to my brewery notes then to tell you a bit about 71 Brewing. So as I mentioned to you earlier, 71 Brewing are based in Dundee and they were founded by Duncan Alexander and Mark Griffiths, both of whom come from a background in IT. So Duncan was visiting family in Melbourne in Australia when his home brewing cousin took him to visit White Rabbit, who are quite a well-known brewery over there in Australia. And I think I have had a couple of beers from them before, but this really got him interested in craft beer. And when he got back, he went down to Watford and bought a small 1BBL kit back in 2011 and then he set it up as a communal brewery in Portobello in Edinburgh and he said that this gave him the platform to experiment with brewing and also to let people try his beers as well and get feedback but this venture naturally came to an end in 2015 and at this point he realised that he didn't want to continue as a software engineer because it was taking him further into finance jobs so he contacted Mark who was an old colleague and someone that he knew ran businesses very very well and together they secured funding from Scott Scottish Enterprise and other companies as well and they set up their brewery next to where the old Blackness foundry was and there they have 7,200 square feet of space and a 25 hectolitre brew house but the foundry itself was quite famous actually it used to make munitions and things like that during the Second World War but it was headquartered at number 71 Belfield Street and this is where the brewery takes its name from and at the moment they are actually going through an expansion phase they're working to increase their floor space and their, uh, their capacity as well so exciting times ahead from these guys. They're quite a prolific brewery. They've got lots of different styles and things. When I was in their bar, they had milkshake IPAs, coffee stouts, um, there was porters and things like that in there as well. German doppelbox. So it's quite cool to see a new brewery having a go at a diverse range of styles. I mean, I was impressed with their Munich Dunkel before. Um, the IPAs are supposed to be pretty good too. And the uh, the stout that I tried at that time, or was I forget if it was a stout or a porter, but the dark beer that I tried when I was in the bar as well was uh, really quite nice. So yeah, go and check out 71 Brewing if you get the chance. They're starting to distribute their beers a little bit more widely throughout Scotland. So pretty much you can get them in Edinburgh and Glasgow these days, and I'm, I think you can get them up in Inverness and Aberdeen too, and obviously in Dundee. So um, yeah, it's cool to see this brewery as well, because one of the other main things was that it was there was nothing in terms of craft beer in Dundee until quite recently. Recently, there was the Brew Dog Bar opened up, and then very quickly, um, soon after that, actually, these guys opened up as well. So, yeah, exciting times for Dundee Craft Beer over the next little while. But that's all you really need to know about 71 Brewing for the moment. If you want to learn a little bit more, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram as well to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And if you're interested in all the different beers that these guys have done, you can check out the, the Rate Beer pages and the Untapped pages as well, and that will give you a list of all those different things. But anyway, let's get on 
it to the actual tasting of this beer itself then. So I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork on this one before we open it up. There you can see this one, it's just a nice little 330 milliliter can. The Ferris Red, when I reviewed that, came in a 330 milliliter bottle and I think they are making a full transition over to just using cans because it's just easier and lighter for them to transport in terms of space and things like that so they can put a lot more uh, beer basically in one truck. But it says on the back here, this one says, uh, take the highway that is best, follow the left coast way out west. Classic American Simcoe, Citra and Chinook hops are married to a rich malt backbone, deep golden in colour with flavours of citrus, pine, tropical fruit and a bold west coast bitterness to finish and best served between 6 and 8 degrees. So um, yeah, nicely presented this one. As I say, the thing that sticks out to me about this beer is that at 5.4% it is a little bit less in its uh, alcohol content than you would normally expect expect from a West Coast IPA but you know we'll see how we get on with that as long as it tastes good who really cares but yeah Chinook Citra and uh, Simcoe in this one very classic American hops Simcoe known for its passion fruity notes Citra is very much mangoes and tropical fruit complexities and Chinook is a big you know a pine resinous beast with a bit of grapefruit in it so I'm curious to see how it turns out but nicely presented beer this one so let's get it out and we will get on with the tasting then 5.4% West Coast IPA. They did have a um, a New England IPA when I was in the bar as well, but I never picked that one up. I picked this one up and a Scotch Ale, which you'll see me review at a later date. That one was a collaboration with Pomona Island, if I remember correctly. But you'll see that video appear a little bit later. But I'm actually reviewing this one before that, of course. I'm filming this video before that too. But yeah, as you can see, and as you would expect with this one then, it's poured a nice quite rich ambery orange colour this one. There's a solid finger and a half of a frothy, I would say cream coloured head on this one. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and a few little ones just heading up towards the bottom of that head there. But you know, overall it looks pretty much as you would expect from a West Coast IPA. Nowhere near as hazy as some of these New England ones, but if I put my fingers behind the glass, you can see this beer is definitely um, unfiltered. The head, in terms of its colour, I would definitely say it's creamy, maybe ivory in terms of the, the colour there, but it looks pretty much as you would expect from a nice West Coast IPA. So nothing overly surprising about its appearance, so let's have a look at the aroma and see how we get on then. Oh, that smells really juicy actually. That's almost unusual to be honest. Um, I don't think I've ever come across a West Coast IPA that is quite as sharp and as juicy as that, to be honest. It does have a little bit of the almost New England um, juicy fruitiness coming out of it, which is unusual. Um, and that might be the thing. I mean, at 5.4%, it might be taking some of the New England elements and putting it into a, a West Coast IPA. It might just be having the West Coast bitterness. So we'll need to we'll comment on how this one fits into the IPA subcategories as we go through this video. But yeah, really lovely juicy fruity notes out of this one. The the Citra and the Simcoe are really kind of pushing their way to the top on this one. It actually, you can smell a little bit of that passion fruit and the passion fruit's coming out as quite bright. And the thing I've always found interesting about Simcoe, if you compare it to, for example, um, Galaxy or Sabro is another one I think that can give you a bit of passion fruit these days. I've always found Simcoe is very milky uh, and almost milkshakey in the passion fruit notes that you can get out of it. But it comes across in this beer as being very, very sharp, which is interesting. I've never quite come across it like that before. But yeah, some nice mangoey notes in there. Yeah, definitely a, a lot of nice mango in this one too. Um, it's almost got a little bit of a kind of uh, candied fruit flavour to it as well. The aroma of this really reminds me of like Frutella or something like that. You know, if you open up one of these little sweets and just in, smell it before you actually eat it, it really, it has this really kind of candied sort of vibe to it. But definitely mangoes and passion fruits, which are the things you'd expect from, uh, from Citra and Simcoe respectively. There's a little bit of a sort of lychee quality to this one. Almost a, it's almost a little bit apple as well, which is kind of interesting. And there's a little bit of a reddish fruity quality this one. Maybe a bit of lychee. Yeah. I think lychees is fair. Definitely some nice juicy lychees in there. The interesting thing about this beer, though, for me, is that it has Chinook in there, but you're not getting... The, the big piney raisins that you would normally get from Chinook isn't immediately obvious in the aroma, in my mind. So that's one of the things that's puzzling me about this a little bit. Um, the grapefruit that you would also expect from Sim, from uh, Chinook rather, isn't so obvious in this one either. This is really, in terms of West Coast beers, it really is very kind of um, juicy and fruity 
Um, and I mean, you do get fruits in the West Coast IPAs normally, but the, the way that the juiciness comes out in this one is a lot more reminiscent of, for example, a New England uh, IPA. So that's an interesting point to make about this one. In terms of the green side of the hops, this one definitely leans towards the grassy end of things. As I say, I'm not getting so much in the way of um, notes out of of piney resin notes out of Chinook and in fairness that is one of the things if you add those hops early in the brew and um, you won't get the aromas it's really the aromas are the aromas come out more from the hops that are added later in the brew so it may well be that the Chinook has been used as the bittering hop in the early stages in fairness so um, yeah but really nice notes coming out of this one in terms of the malt base it actually comes across as almost slightly vanilla and milkshakey. That's one of the interesting things because I did try um, berry bonbon uh, when I was in the bar and the aroma in the malt base of this actually reminds me of that one quite a bit. So the aroma really comes across as being a little bit sort of milkshakey and um, comes across as being a, yeah comes across as being a little bit milkshakey, a little bit of vanilla and almost kind of candy. There is a bit of a breadiness to it but I'm not getting sort of biscuit and caramel that you would sometimes get out of these West Coast beers. So in terms of the aroma, this one is not what I would expect from a West Coast IP I have to say but we'll judge it on its taste rather than on its aroma. So without further ado, let's have a little taste of this beer and see how we get on. As I always say, take a bit of time and just enjoy that aroma before you get stuck in. But this one is the Left Coast, a West Coast IPA at 5.5. 4% from 71 Brewing up in Dundee here in Scotland. Let's get stuck in. Slanger, let's go. That's pretty nice actually. Um, what I would say about this, I mean straight away, you're going to taste this and it's not a, it's not a classic West Coast IPA this one. Um, it's almost more like a kind of hybrid between uh, New England and a West Coast, but it, to me it really leans a bit more towards that New England side of thing rather than being a kind of classic, you know, 70, 80 IBU and sort of sweet backbone um, West Coast IPA. This one, um, it's a nice beer. To me, if I was blind tasting this, I would probably think that it was a session IPA. I would think that it was intended as a session IPA rather than a West Coast IPA. So that's one thing I would say about this is that it is, it does sort of, in terms of its flavour profile, fit more into that kind of session IPA category, if you like. But in terms of it being a good beer, I think it is. It's just, it's not what I would expect. If I pick up a West Coast IPA, I want a big bitterness and I want a, you know, I want a caramelly backbone to it. That's the one thing I would say about it. Yeah. And I mean, one thing I will say is that in fairness, as you drink more of it, the centre of your palate does start to sweeten up a little bit. But not to, yeah, not to the point where you would say it was a, a, you know, a kind of classic West Coast IPA. That's, the, that's the, the kind of strange thing about this one, actually. But let's try and break this flavour down a little bit then and see how we get on. So in the middle of your palate, what you're going to feel straight away, you can feel some of that kind of pale malty quality just blanketing the middle of your tongue. I think there's definitely a little bit of wheat in there just from the way that it thickens up and it gets smoother. So I'm pretty sure there's a sort of wheaty quality going across the middle of your palate too. Um, I would say in the middle of your tongue there's maybe a little bit of a biscuity sweetness there too so you can feel that just in the very center of your palate but it doesn't really have the it doesn't really have the kind of caramelly sweetness and toastiness that you would expect of um, you know of a west coast IPA that's the main thing having a smooth and kind of thick bready quality to your IPA that's what really makes me describe this one as a sort of session IPA rather than anything else But yeah, on the hoppy side of things then, um, for me, this one, um, it really does again lean towards the sort of grassy side of things. You know, Chinook, if you have a bit of Chinook in there, usually you would expect a bit of kind of big pine resin -y sort of thing. Um, so for me, this one, it just, again, it doesn't really have that. I mean, in the back corners of the palate, there's a little bit of earthiness there. That kind of spreads forward a little bit. You do get a little touch of floral quality um, on the front corners of your palate, but you don't really get that big dankness that you would want from a West Coast IPA. Um, around the front curve of the palate, though, you've got a nice sort of lighter, grassy quality to this one. Um, 
and I would say I would say yeah the green side of the beer really does lean towards that grassier side of uh, side of the spectrum. The grassiness in the floral koi is almost a little bit akin to what you would get from like a German beer, like a sort of German noble hop quality. It's not big and dank. Um, as you might expect with Chinook being in there. Behind the front curve of the palate, of course, that's where you get that little oily bubble where those juicy, fruity esters start to push their way out of the beer. And yeah, the fruity side of this one is actually pretty nicely done. Um, if you go to the back of um, that fruity bubble, you get a little bit of the passion fruit there out of the Simcoe, and as you come further forward, you start to get the juicier mangoes from the citra and then almost towards the front of the tongue you're getting a little bit of the lychee and the sort of gooseberry complexities that you can get from citra. I mean, the fruitiness overall, um, it does have a little bit of the oiliness that you would expect from a West Coast IPA, but it's more, it is more kind of juicy along the same lines as a, as a, as a New England IPA rather than a West Coast IPA. So I mean, overall, what I would say about this beer in terms of its flavour is that it's, if I was blind tasting it, I would definitely think that this was a session IPA. I wouldn't place this as a West Coast IPA at all. That would be my one complaint about this, is that it doesn't, you know, if it's a West Coast IPA, you're going to expect at least 60 IBUs out of it. This one um, does not have that. Um, you also expect a bit of a kind of caramelly backbone, and it doesn't have that either. Um, the fruitiness does have a bit of the oily quality that you'd expect, but there's... Um, to market it as a West Coast IPA, in my opinion, I think is a mistake. I think this one would be better marketed as a session IPA. And at 5.4%, maybe it's a little bit too high in alcohol for that, because normally it would be around sort of 45 or 5% that you'd market session IPAs at. But um, in terms of it actually being a good beer, which is the main question, it is, it's nice. It's just not a West Coast IPA, in my opinion. And that's one of the things, that was the reason I bought this beer, was because I wanted a big, bitter West Coast IPA. But um, I have found something that's pretty nice, but just not what I was expecting at all, in fairness. But as we always say, beer is subjective. And I've noticed that with some of these West Coast style IPAs, they're not, um, to me, the sort of quintessential West Coast IPA is either... Uh, you know, it's like uh, the, the Ballast Point Sculpin is one. Um, you've also got some of the Stone IPAs. You've also got um, Sierra Nevada Torpedo, in fairness, too. But that kind of borders on being an Imperial IPA for me. Those are the quintessential West Coast IPAs, and that's what you should model them on. Um, and this one is more leaning towards that New England side of things. And I have noticed more breweries are... Um, brewing things, they're calling them West Coast IPAs, but they are actually leaning more towards the Session New England side of things. So it's a bit unusual this one. It is a good beer, but it's not what I would have expected when I pick up something that says it's a West Coast IPA. But don't let that put you put you off trying some of their beers. Their beers are very, very nice, but my complaint about this one is just the, the marketing side of it. This shouldn't be marked as a West Coast IPA in my opinion. But yeah, in terms of the mouthfeel of this one then, I would say um, it's mid-bodied, the carbonation is quite smooth, um, overall it's, yeah, overall I would say that this is quite an oily mouthfeel, this beer. Um, it does have a bit of wetness to it as well. In terms of IBUs, I think you're lucky if you get 30 out of this, I would say maybe even 20. Um, it's somewhere down there, and like I say, you would normally expect at least 60 out of a West Coast IPA. Um, in terms of the malt base, it's very kind of smooth and uh, blankets the middle of your tongue. It's, it's yeah, quite smooth, there's only a little bit of sweetness in there. That's one of the other things that distinct, that takes it away from being a West Coast IPA for me, is that it doesn't have that um, sort of sweet caramelly backbone. It is more smooth and bready, as you would expect from a way, from a, from a session IPA rather, but it does have some of that nice juicy fruitiness and it does have a little bit of the oiliness you'd expect from the fruity character in a West Coast IPA. So basically to sum this one up, nice beer, just I think marketed wrong. This one's a session IPA rather than a West Coast IPA in my opinion, but the main thing is they've done another nice beer and uh, I would recommend that you go and try some of their beers. And if you like Session IPAs, you will enjoy this. I've heard that the Mandarina, their New England IPA, is very, very good. Um, the Breakfast Stout is also supposed to be nice as well, so I'll need to see if I can pick that one up sometime. Um, but when I was in the bar, the Doppelbock was really good. I think they've got a bit of a knack for German beers. 
and uh, they've got some a knack for some of the darker beers as well I've heard so I'll see if I can try a few more IPAs from these guys and see what we make but I've heard that they're very good at the New England side of things this one to me seems to be like one of these more kind of hybridy beers that are coming out these days that are they're saying that they're West Coast but it's not quite what a classic West Coast would be but an interesting beer this one I'm glad I was able to review it and I hope you guys have enjoyed my take on this one as well I will be reviewing some more from 71 Brewing over the next little while but let's leave it at that for this one this one is the Left Coast West Coast IPA although as I say more of a session IPA in my mind um, from 71 Brewing in, uh, in Dundee really nice brewery and one that I do recommend that you check out if you are interested in Scottish craft beer so once again thank you for watching my beer reviews until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual YouTube stuff let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know what your favourite beers are from 71 Brewing as well and I'm sure that I'll return to these guys at some point in the fairly near future I do have a Scotch Ale that you'll see me review at some point in the next couple of weeks as well but thank you again for watching check out my social media make sure you check out 71 Brewing and I'll catch you guys very soon until the next time, Slanja just now, and I'll catch you guys later. Slanja, Skull, cheers.